Hello everyone, my name is Nafmi and welcome to I Wanna Sex. This message is specially recorded for summer session, so welcome to summer I Wanna Sex. One thing that you should all know that I Wanna Sex has never been offered in summer previously. So this is kind of like first time I'm teaching this course in summer. It's sunny outside, so I hope that this very warm and sunny vibes will stay with us throughout the semester and we get along really well. I'm very excited about this, sem this semester actually. So welcome you all. And um, like I said, my name is Nakmi and I'll be teaching this course, but I will not be teaching this course alone. I have a um, TA um, whose name is Prastu. Prastu has TA'd with me previously in spring semester at the beginning of this year. And she is fantastic, fa fantastic TA. You are going to love her. And a little bit about myself, my background is in architecture and I'm a graduate from Seattle, SFU. My PhD work um, is about designers and how designers use different tools um, in their design process. And so basically what I have done, my research work has led to develop few guidelines for UX designers and UX researchers to kind of look at, um, do I, I devise some patterns in the design process and so kind of um, the guidelines should help support those patterns um, when designers are designing the interfaces. Uh, apart from that, um, I teach this course at 106 and I also teach Make Gym Studio. Um, so if at any point you're more interested in looking at entrepreneurial side of the things um, and entrepreneurial sides of the design things, then please feel free to apply for Make Gene Studio. Um, it is a three semester course. Um, so it happens in fall, spring and summer. So I am simultaneously running the studio as well as running this at 106. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Prastu will be um, introducing herself more appropriately um, in the labs. Just to give you um, a brief intro to Prastu. Prastu is a master's student at SEAT and she started, I think, last semester. And she's, like I said, she's fabulous at what she does and you'll be pleased to meet her soon. Um, a bit about course schedule. So I will be posting um, our regular meetup lecture times on Thursdays, 10.30 to 12.30, um, 12.20. But however, I will be posting an hour-ish long lecture every week, um, which will be recorded, pre-recorded, and uh, you will be asked to listen to it. Since you are already listening to the lecture before or during the week, so the live sessions that happens on Thursdays 10.30 will be for one hour only. So uh, since we're allocated two hours, one hour is going to be asynchronous recorded lectures and one hour is going to be live session. So to all of you, we'll be meeting on Thursdays live from 10.30 to 11.20, not 12.20, okay? And so the expectation, we encourage you to listen to the live lectures before coming to the live session. Uh, we encourage you to listen to the recorded lectures before coming to the live sessions. However, you know what? Uh, we understand things happen and you're busy and it's quite understandable. So even if you watch it after the live session, that's cool as well. As long as you do watch those recorded um, videos. Labs are on Thursdays, both D101 and D102. Both of the labs are going to be TA'd by Prastu. Um, so um, the uh, D101 starts at one o'clock on Thursday and D102 starts at uh, 4.30 on Thursday. The Most of the communication is going to happen through Canvas. So I have gotten rid of the course website at the moment um, since I'm revamping it and redesigning it. Um, so most of the content is going to be posted on um, Canvas. 
So um, the lectures, the quizzes, the assignments, so the submissions are going to happen on Canvas as well. Now, any questions, communication, like clarification, conversation, that can happen on Discord. So we will be using communication platform, which is Discord, live sessions that are going to happen on Zoom. So links to all of these have been posted on Canvas. Please check them out. I will be sending you all an email as well with all these links. Uh, a bit about course outline, um, we are going to start week one with special thinking and learning about objects, um, spaces and operations, listen to the formal lecture, you'll get to know all about all of that. Um, we'll move on week two right into sketching and so we will take week two, we'll take a step back, we'll learn to draw how to draw straight lines and curves and um, um, diagonal lines etc and um, that's the only week we'll spend on basic lines after that week three onwards everything is gets technical and then we assume that you have perfected your sketching by week three and then from week three onward is more complex geometries and getting to understand how to represent those geometries using sketching as well as digital tools like as it on shape we'll be using on shape and then we'll be making model making as well so representation of complex geometries through different uh, mediums including sketching um, digital modeling and physical modeling there is then moving on we will learn a bit about mechanism mechanical design components gears cams pulleys etc and then um, we will use that to words or final project and so all the spatial thinking all the representational uh, mediums that we have learned over the semester we'll use it for the final project there is a Canada Day break week 8 um, so watch out for that I have already put it in the course outline look at the slides you will know when it really happens so it's in week 8 Regards to um, the assessment, most of the work is going to be individual, except there is a group project in week five. And I keep it group because even though it's online, but we really want you to experiment a bit about group dynamics when the group members are present physically, aren't, aren't co-located. Um, so this is kind of like a a run with you guys knowing that everything is pandemic knowing that everything is online and in real life as well more often than not our team members are not co-located or coexisting in the same physical space so we have to work with people who are physically um, distant and so in that scenario it's kind of like a, a good one week two week project where you get to collaborate with the person who you just can't talk online um, so the rest is individual most of the your grading is um, the homework and labs and there are individual quizzes every week I think um, from week 1 till 7 and then week 10 there are quizzes those are based on the video recorded videos that I'll be posted on so watch those videos do the quizzes every week and then you're set so those are online quizzes and then there's a final project, which is 15%, um, and the final exam, which is 25% of the overall grade. There are bonus points um, involved in this course, a lot of bonus points. So watch out for the formal lecture, and, um, and I will be announcing those bonus points uh, in the live sessions as well. So thank you so much for listening to me. Once again, welcome to IIT 106. I can't wait to see you all on Thursday at 10.30. Bye for now. But watch this complete video because it has some logistics um, and some other information that you might want to watch. Um, and then we'll see you on Thursday. Bye now. Now this course has been in CR has been offered by CR for the past decade or so, um, and it has evolved. Although it has evolved, it has changed every year. There has been lots of new content added, new problems 
uh, challenges being added and the projects have changed and evolved over the years. Um, and every year, it is so much fun. Um, the, I've been involved in this course for the past few years, um, perhaps three to four years. And every year, it is really a lot of fun developing this course a little bit further than what it was last year. But having all this with, with keeping in like with, with all this growth that has been uh, coming in this course, still the essence of this course has still stayed the same. So it is quite important for me to really credit the people who developed the vision for this course. And so uh, the people who involved um, in the initial development of the course content are John Dill, um, Khalil, Mike, Ben, Rob, uh, Ken Zuf and, and myself, and also Barberi, who from educational department, she has been a great mentor in developing this course uh, content and the delivery strategies. So I'm really thankful to all of them um, who put some time and effort in developing the course what it is today. Now, I was um, thinking really how to define it, what is it, how to really let you know what this course is about. Had this course, had this lecture be online, I right now I'll be asking like each one of you, can you tell me what this course is? What do you think this course is? Why did you enroll yourself in this course really? Other than the fact that it, it might be one of the, you know, uh, compulsory courses that you have to take in the first year of this year. Well, other than that, what are your expectations from this course? Um, but now that everything is online, so really I had to think about how to introduce this course to you. So here I'm going to introduce this course with a visual. As the course is about spatial thinking, you might as well introduce it using spatial visual graphics. So here on the screen, what you're seeing right now is um, a strand beast mechanism designed and created by Theo Jensen. Yeah, it's, it's quite famous mechanism. Now what you see is like, um, you know, the sketch of the mechanism that evolved into simulation and then uh, there, there is the small one leg prototype, uh, then maybe uh, which evolved into a all leg prototype, but it's still small scale, then evolved into a full scale prototype, a uh, full scale um, final project uh, model, physical model. So really, it covers this, these this, these um, images or videos, small um, anima animation animated videos. They cover the real, the whole uh, design cycle that we will be covering in this course. So you may say any any design that begins with an idea. There there are constraints, there are variables. Um, there is a problem statement. Based on that, you try to understand that uh, problem by sketching solutions for it. The more you sketch, the more the problem state becomes more clear to you um, and you get to understand it in a more deeper way. 
And so you start in sketches, you probably do some simulations, some calculations here and there, do some dimensioning. We'll be doing all of that as well. We'll be developing technical sketches, ideation sketches, moving on to technical sketches, and then moving on to simulation of to doing uh, to do some mathematical calculations, for example, gears and you know linkages, etc. Moving on to small scale prototypes and then maybe big scale final prototype presentation prototypes. So this, we will cover them all in iPhone. So this is IIT 106. Aren't you excited already? Well, I hope you are. Now, how, what is the assessment? Like, how are we going to grade you guys for the content we're going to teach you in this course? Well, um, there's lots of, like, each lab has lab activities in lab activities as well as some homework assignments um, those will com be comprised of 35 percent of your overall grade um, individual quizzes there will be individual quizzes um, there are 12 lectures if i exclude this lecture then there will be 11 lectures really in total and after each lecture there will be a small tiny quiz um, on Canvas. So when you are done listening to, to this lecture or the upcoming lecture, um, then go to Canvas. There will be a small tiny quiz. That quiz is a timed quiz, which means the only time you have to fill in the answers are that most probably will be MCQs, true, false, or short answer questions um, uh, sort of a quiz. The only time you'll have to, uh, to you will have time to fill that quiz will be between the release of this video and the start of the lecture which is when it say um 4 30 every wednesday 4 30 so i will try to give you one week's time or at least four days between that so that you will have the quizzes will be locked between uh, after um, at the beginning of the uh, online uh, lecture meeting time which is when it's say 4 30. So those small quizzes will be overall comprised of 20% of your grade. So make sure not only you listen to the entire lecture, you also do solve those quizzes. And so within those quizzes, please make sure that um, you do that those individually. So once you start that quiz, um, there is no way that you can just end it. Once you start it, you have to finish. Otherwise, you lose the chance. So it's a once time that can only be opened and uh, done. Once you open that quiz, you have to do it right away. So make sure you're really ready when you want to um, uh, uh, start that quiz. Um, then there will be a software quiz, which is on shape uh, that we will be. I'll be telling you a little bit about on shape later on. Um, but we will be teaching you on shape, and we will take a small quiz on that too um, to see how well you are able to do certain tasks in that tool. And that will be five percent of your overall grade. The final project is comprised of 25% of the overall grade, so it's like quite heavy. So make sure you are uh, well prepared for that. You can start thinking about the final project ideas right now, if you will, if you want to. Um, final exam will be 15%. Like I said, there will be a final exam for this course. However, I'm not entirely sure what form of that final exam will be, but there will be a final exam. So overall, if I were to divide the assessment for this course into how much is the individual work and how much is the group work, uh, you'll see 75% of this course is involves individual work and 25% involves group work. Um, yes there are some bonus points yes and so what is going to happen is that um i'm going to there there are 12 lectures in this course and within those lectures there are going to be three easter eggs hidden in those lectures and the person who's gonna find those eggs hidden eggs um those not are not like literally, they're, they're those going to be like a link to a certain 
um, website where will be there will be some sort of a puzzle that you need to solve a special thinking challenge that you will be solving on your own make sure you don't share with anybody because anyone who solves that puzzle the first will get three bonus points for each egg so hypothetically or a pro like there, there's a chance that each one of you has um, a chance to have nine point nine bonus points so three eggs three points each nine points in total however it is possible that not all three eggs are going to be you know discovered by the same person so it is possible that one person discovers person a discovers the egg a and the person b discovers egg c so uh, whatever the case whoever discovers it first and solves the puzzle first will receive a three bonus points and um, how will i know who has solved it so once you solve that puzzle you really have to start a discussion um, i will open up discussions for each easter egg and you have to write the answer to that puzzle and those puzzles will be open till the end of this course so whosoever has the first correct answer will get those bonus points so happy hunting so that was all about bonus points now a few logistic issues for the course you know we have to be really aware of um, what to find where to find when to find so really the whole course content will always be posted on this website which is www.sfu.ca slash tilde t106 so make sure this website is among your bookmarked website you will be visiting it a lot all lectures like including this lecture visual lectures all lectures will be posted posted there or lecture slides will be posted there all sort of lab assignments what is the deadline the expectations what is expected of you to do as a homework as an in-lab activity will be posted there the only thing that you will need to go on canvas would be to submit your work so most like almost all of those submissions are going to be digital submissions so all sort of digital submission even if it is a hand drawing if, even if it is a digital drawing that still will have to be submitted online on canvas um so it has to be submitted digitally so what you need is a really good scanner at home that i'm telling you in very advance you will need a good scanner if not the physical scanner but if you have like a good app scannable or any other there are many scanning apps that you can find online i'm sure you are much more aware of all of this than myself um so yeah just find a good scanning app in, and install them in your mobile and then make sure that you do we will not i'm, I'm going to tell you one more like once and for all we will not ex, um, accept those um very low quality low resolution images please you are in university and this is the whole idea of going digital working from home homeschooling like uh, attending university from home you have to be very aware of how to take pictures or how to take good scans of your homework so google it find out if you are unable to if you need help reach out to myself or your ta and we will help figure uh, help, help you to figure out the scanning mechanisms um so all the digital submissions are going to be on canvas and then any announcement any changes in the syllabus or anything that is upcoming will be shared with you via email or canvas announcements so check your email often like the sfu email now here's the book for this course that you will be needing and um I would suggest buying either an e-copy for it or asking for this book to be delivered. This book is going to be very handy because uh, we will be using lots of uh, problems from the book as well as you will be assigned weekly readings from the book. So make sure you do have this book handy whether in the digital version like a digital copy or a physical copy. 
now i'm sure you're you all are aware of online you know etiquette or online class netiquette i must say um you have done it in spring part partially in spring and all summer and so this is fall, so you're already pro in it. However, it's important for me to mention at the beginning of the course that there are a few expectations. Being in a virtual online environment, there are a few expectations that we do expect you to be very respectful of other fellow members' feelings. You have to be, uh, there, this is it. This is online interactive platform, but there is zero tolerance policy for hateful language or any inappropriate comments. Um, make sure you are very aware of that you are communicating online. So the words that you write, think before you write. And when you write, read it multiple times so that it's very transparent, very clear. When you're communicating through messages, make sure you're not screaming in your message. You know, all caps sounds like really screaming. So make sure you're very vigilant of you are typing a message. It is, it is to be read by 100 people at the same time. So make sure you are aware, you're kind, you're appropriate, um, your language is clear because many times that's what happened most of the um miscommunication happens when you are writing something and it is um in an online environment and the other person who's reading that doesn't um interpret it the way it is written so make sure your written comments written feedback written communication discussion points are very clear concise and uh transparent in terms of their meaning so that's um about online classroom etiquette um now for supplies yes very important so for this course throughout this course we'll be needing some office supplies so of course you'll be needing pencils erasers and pen that's no question you do you have to have a pencil with you all the time when you are in the lecture when you are in the lab you have to have a pencil, a set of pencils, not only just one pencil, a set of pencils, razors, sharpeners, as well as sketching papers, plain sketching papers, like plain, no ruled lines on it, just plain um, sketching papers. And then from week two onwards, this is week one, week two onwards, uh, we will be asking you to start uh, bringing um, grid paper. So there are two kinds of grid papers we'll be asking you to bring. One is the square grid paper and the template for the square grid paper is available on the course website. And the other one is um, perspective grid paper and the template for the perspective grid is also available on the course website. Um, so either you can download those templates and print them or there are, I know for the fact that on Staples or I think Walmart, there are some um grid books available like uh, a book with grid papers in it um feel free to buy that if you want to um uh, so but you definitely will be needing around like 20 to 30 grid papers each for perspective and square now um other than that you will be needing cardboard so my go-to place for cardboard is definitely dollar store down it's cheap it's easy it's convenient you know where it is just go there buy some cardboards uh single ply is okay corrugated cardboard sheets is the one i'm talking about um so for now i i um i, I foresee maybe you'll be needing two or three cardboards that's all you'll be needing other than that you will be needing box cutter exacto knife or box cutter choose one any one of them um scissors you might already have at home so you don't have to worry about that we might not actually use them but just in case um and steel rulers and the most important thing the cutting board so we will be needing those things make sure you go through the supply list i will be emailing the supply list as well just in case um so be prepared you will be needing these items um yes so for the software many of you have asked me questions like do we need to do are we using solidworks what kind of software um, we need to download a machine or machines are not strong enough like memory wise and computation wise uh, processing power isn't 
strong so well i have a good news for you we have two software that we envision to use in this course and both of them are cloud-based so you don't have to download anything so one of them is on shape on shape um, um is an online cloud-based tool and it's, it's we um myself and the tas are going to be teaching this tool for the first time um so hopefully it will be a smooth transition from solidworks to onshape um it's very similar and so we we are glad that we were able to get a license for it you don't have to buy it. it's it's the educational version is free you don't have to buy anything all you have to do is just create an account and start using and collaboration is really easy you just need to share the link with your tas and myself or your group members and you're able to collaborate on onshape very easy to use we will give you separate lectures on how to use on chip there is the whole series of activities and lesson plans on on chip now the second software that we'll be using in our lab one which is uh monday uh september 14th uh we will be using mecca breaks which is an online digital uh lego software and uh, we have a, a small challenge that the solution for the challenge involves you to develop a lego model and so we'll be using mecca break so that also is an online cloud-based tool so so far we have decided that we are going to use mecca breaks however fingers crossed there is a chance that we we right now we are struggling to um decide between mecca breaks and there's another one bricklink studio so whichever we decide we will send an email out so far mecca breaks is the one that we are going ahead with in case we change uh over decision we will let you know in advance both mecca breaks and the bricklinks are available online so you know they're, they're both online and they're both free and they both are for windows and mac work they're available for both platforms there you go so it's really easy um so it's just a matter of few operations that we're looking at the um comparison between mecca brick and the breaking but the sooner we decide we'll let you know you don't have to worry about anything and we'll teach you how to use the software the good news that i was saying is that you don't have to worry about your computing computer being not strong enough or being not uh, equipped with heavy software so these are very lightweight software um projects so this course is really divided into four projects um the first project that we're going to begin with um a gimbal exercise and what is a gimbal we'll talk about it in um in a few minutes um the first project is a week-long project it will be introduced to you today and you will be um doing this in the labs along with your tears tears are going to walk you through and then you'll be creating a model um so the second project and the second project is a joinery exercise that will involve some sort of cardboard physical model making activity and that is also one week long project um so it'll be very fun as well uh, the third is a linkage mechanism project that will involve working on a digital model on shape and then um you know you will be working on like mates and assemblies how to create a linkage mechanism and the fourth and the final project is a is called a beautiful machine and this is the final project for this course and i'm very excited to start the project i love that project and i'm sure you all are gonna love it so it is not a week long it's four to five weeks long project just a mega project um so what are we going to do in the labs other than the labs that we are doing the project so in all of the almost all of the labs are kind of like surrounding around the same concepts of uh, which i was talking about the whole design process so some of the labs are targeted towards sketching activities others are more um focused on digital model making and some of them are involved lots of physical active model making However, we will be touching each one. Some of the labs have all of these components and some of them are focusing on one component at a time. Um, so it's really, everything is really um, interactive and engaging. Content is really interactive and engaging. I hope you'll have fun with it. Yeah, so it is important to mention about the plagiarism and copyright because 
this is the design course and there is a certain like lots of design activities the final project as well as the mini project as well involve designing and creative solutions and then this course also has some sort of writing element into it so keeping this in mind it is important to mention plagiarism copyright policies so if you're not aware of what a plagiarism is and what are the penalties for it uh, penalty for it please do go on canvas and there's a module on plagiarism be aware that if we find somebody copying some other students work they both will be penalized and there are swear penalties for it so please 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 i'll say it again please don't follow don't go through that route of copying any of any of your friends or any of your seniors work um thank you i don't want this is this is the awkward conversation i don't want to stress it enough and i'll mention it just once and i'll just trust you with not doing it please know that if you do copy we will know we will know yeah how i won't tell you how but we will know um so yeah <laughs> moving on like i said we have lots of writing um element like the writing assignments as well most of this writing is involved reflective piece of writing and so one thing that we are not going to be focusing on this is not a writing course which means we're not going to be focusing on teaching you how to write well so we expect you to write well on your own and what we are going to focus on in the writing assignments are going to be the ideas the concepts that you share with us so make sure your ideas you're very elaborate concise and clear in the ideas that you write in those assignments and um, the more clear the more accurate the more concise you are the better grades you're going to be getting so that too as well i'm going to be saying in the beginning of the course and i expect you to really understand this and so that i don't have to repeat it um yeah so moving on now let's begin the formal lecture 